Hi, it's Jamie from agritourismideas.com here today to show you how to build a giant hay bale pyramid. Now, if you're watching this video, you may already believe in the value of having one of these in your agritourism business. But in case you're not quite sure, let me tell you why I feel they're a must have for every venue. First of all, they make an awesome photo opportunity. Now we all have the painted plywood cutouts that people stick their heads through and uh, the nice pumpkin setups, which are also great photo opportunities for individuals or small families. What the giant hay bale pyramid does is gives you not only a great place for families for photo ops, but large groups as well. And we all know that great photos end up making it to social media, which drives more interest and traffic to our venue. Secondly, the value in these pyramids is it keeps a lot of kids busy at one time. We typically like to locate them in an area where people may be waiting for something like a hayride. The parents love that the kids have something to play on rather than asking when the hayride's gonna get there. And we also integrate it into our field trips. Part of their schedule is typically a 15 minute block of time dedicated to the hay bale pyramid. And the kids love it. They always hate leaving even after the 15 minute time frame. And lastly, it's one of the lowest maintenance items that you're gonna have at your venue. We have had thousands and thousands of kids and adults climb on this through a season and they hold up great and are still safe at the end of the year. All right, now that we've talked about the value of a hay bale pyramid at your venue, let's talk about how to build it. Well, first of all, you need to locate the hay bales. In the US and Canada, they're fairly common and easy to find. Uh, we're here in Northeastern Pennsylvania where they're very easy to find because the local farmers mow any hay field and turn it into giant hay bales that they sell, sell to the mushroom farms. It doesn't have to be high quality feed grade, it's just grass that they use for mulch down at the mushroom farms. And we typically find the price for a bale like that is in that 40 to $60 range. Now, typically these hay bale pyramids take 25 to 40 bales to do right. So if you do the math, that is still a lot of money. It could cost you 1,500, 2,000 or more if you bought them outright. We recommend that you get creative. Maybe look for somebody to sponsor it. What we did for the last several years is we approached the farmer and said, hey, can we rent these from you? At the end of the year, you can still sell them to the mushroom farm. And that worked out great for us. We actually got the farmer to rent them these bales at $2 a piece, saved us a ton of money. And we love that deal, so we got a lot more for other uses for decoration and, and uh, keeping people in lines and that sort of thing. So they're a great use for other things as well. All right, so then we needed to figure out the number of bales we need for our pyramid. So we need to do the layout. What I like to do is I like to go into Microsoft Excel and pull up a blank page and create cells that match the size of the hay bales. Now typically, all the pyramids I've built, they've been with three foot tall by three foot wide by seven foot long bales. Today we're using a three foot tall by four foot wide by seven foot long bale. No matter what the size of the bale, you can figure out a way to lay it out safely and effectively. We also recommend three layers as, as a minimum good size. You could go bigger. The bigger you go, the bigger your base, the more bales you need. Um, and so it's, it's, this is kind of the sweet spot that we found is a three layer maze. So once we've created this um, in Excel, we then take it for those of us who like to see something visual and we cut them out into blocks that, we, that will create our pyramid. So here are our three layers that we're gonna use today. The bottom layer is 15 bales and ends up being, uh, let's see, four, 20 foot by, so basically 21 feet by 20 feet. And then our next layer is eight bales, our top layer is three bales. So one of the things you must consider when you go to build your maze is an overlap, uh, a ledge between each layer, very important. Insurance companies do not wanna see a giant hay staircase basically where somebody could be at the top and fall and end up all the way at the bottom. So they wanna see a landing at every layer. And typically we find that a two foot minimum is perfect. So offset that next layer by two feet and it'll be a much safer uh, pyramid. It's also important to overlap the bales and, and, and so that it ties the integrity together. Don't just stack one bale on top of each other. You'll notice as we build this that 
each one of our bales is touching four corners, is overlapping four corners of another bale, and that provides great integrity. And so before we go to start building this, let's talk about your location at your site. Where should you put this at your site? Well, first thing is I would, uh, I would not locate this on any hard surface. No concrete, blacktop, gravel, any sort, because kids are gonna fall off from the bottom layer. And even at three feet, um, it will create injuries on a hard surface. So find a nice, soft, grassy area, to level area to put this on. Uh, secondly, do not locate this near any structures or fences or signposts or anything that kids could fall off into. That's also a very dangerous situation. And lastly, I would say locate it near somewhere that's going to be manned by a staff member. We never manned our hay bale pyramids. They were just kind of a fun thing for kids to climb on, but we always put it somewhere within sight and, and yelling distance of another activity so that the person running that activity could kind of monitor what was going on uh, at the hay bale pyramid. And when we're done, we'll talk more about those safety issues and some tips we have around that. So now let's start... Uh, talking about how we're gonna build this. So it's very important to be intentional when you go to build this. Otherwise, you'll, if you just put the first layer in, then try to get the second layer, skid, steer, front end loader, won't have enough reach to get those bales in there. So you need to kind of build up and then out. So in this particular instance, we are gonna be running our first and second layer the same direction. They're still gonna be overlapping, but they're gonna be running the same direction. So it's we are going to start by putting in the back two rows and the top row of the second layer and then we'll take a break and talk about where we're going from there and how we keep things tight and that sort of thing um, if you were to run it the other direction if your second layer was going the opposite direction of your first layer you would actually want to start with the middle row of your base layer but for today we're doing it the other direction so we are going to start with our two back rows of the first layer so Let's get started. Okay, now we've got our first six bales down on the ground for our bottom layer. Uh, we wanted to stop at this point and point out that it's very important that you keep the bales as tight together as possible. Uh, for one, integrity of the bales staying together, but also to uh, limit the number of gaps and places where people can step down into a hole. So from this point, what we're going to do is start our second layer. We're going to be putting two bales on top next that's going to tie in all six bales. They're going to overlap all six bales between the two bales. Then I'm going to put down my next layer and my next set of second layer bales. And then we'll come back and describe how we're going to handle the top layer. Okay, here we are. We are about a third of the way done. We have uh, part of our lower layer done, part of our second layer done. Before we go any further, we need to start building our top layer before it's out of reach. So next, you'll see me bring in a single bale and try to get it positioned to overlap these four second layer bales. And then I'll go back and do another bottom row, another second row, another single bale on top, and then repeat again until we're done. So here we go. All right, well, there you have it. In under an hour, you can build an attraction that kids are gonna remember for a long time to come. All right, a few safety things we wanna go over before we wrap things up. First thing is, let's talk about these strings here. Now, most of the years that I built these, um, I, I opted to have the strings on the outside rather than the top, because as things get packed down, these strings can become a tripping hazard. Now with these particular bales, instead of the normal three foot by three foot by seven foot, since they're four foot, if I would have tipped these up on edge, it would have really been a, a far drop. So in my estimation, a three foot drop between layers is less of a risk than, uh, or having the tripping hazard with the strings was less of a risk than that increased foot drop from each layer. 
So just keep that in mind. If you have smaller bales, the three by three by seven, I would highly recommend that you turn them up on the side so that they're actually walking on the side of the bales. Um, you would think since they're not intended to shed water that you'd get a lot of degradation and that sort of thing, but they work fine that way for the year and are safer. Now, if you do have to do strings up, uh, as things get packed down, one of the maintenance items you want to do is shove loose hay under the strings to try to keep them tight and so a foot can't get under there real easy. Um, the other thing you want to do for safety is to fill the holes in between, between where things match up. So we have some grass here, but you would use loose hay. Take loose hay and just have your staff just start shoving it down and packing it hard. And that's really the only maintenance you have to do the whole season is once a week or depending on your traffic maybe once a day have your staff take some loose hay around fill any holes that have opened up since the day before to keep people from losing their leg in the in the holes or twisting an ankle now in, in my opinion it's also important to have some signage uh, for the hay pyramid we typically had a sign at each corner that said something like no horse play no king of the mountain because this thing just invites King of the Mountain for junior high boys. They love to uh, see who they can throw off the top. Um, so we suggest the signage. And as we said before, don't put it too close to the pyramid, especially if you use T-posts. Get it far enough away that even if somebody gets shoved off, they're not going to impale themselves on a T-post. And lastly, like we said before, try to locate it someplace close to where you have a staffed event so somebody can keep their eye on it. Now, there's been a year or two where I have gone one layer higher with one um, other bale up on top. And as long as you maintain that two foot ledge like we have here all the way around, including the top, that also makes a nice addition and gets them another three foot higher in the year. So you can consider doing that as well. And you'd want to think about that um, long before you got to this point so that you could get it up there a little easier. Hmm. All right. Well, that's about it for how to build a hay pyramid. Uh, if you would like help in laying out your pyramid or have any questions, feel free just to email me at jamie at agritourismideas.com. Also check out our site for great marketing ideas, uh, great tips on how to build other things. Be watching our YouTube channel for more how-to videos as we want to help you become successful in your agritourism business. Talk to you later.